we're going to do is cover the uh, basics on the inspection, use, and maintenance of a body support device used in uh, fall arrest. Uh, what we're going to uh, uh, train on is the full body harness. Uh, before using any fall arrest equipment, you should give it some inspection. With harnesses, because you have webbing, it's all, not just a visual, but it's also a touch. Uh, for the webbing, you want to invert it and uh, bend it over your hand, inspect both sides of the webbing in this fashion. Uh, besides the webbing, you also want to inspect the hardware, make sure that the uh, D-ring uh, is not cracked or deformed. Make sure if you have tongue buckle leg straps, which we do in this situation, that the grommets are intact, there are none missing or distorted. Also check for your labels and instructions, making sure they are not missing and that they are legible. Also uh, check uh, some uh, some harnesses have built-in uh, fall indicators to let you know when the harness has been involved in a fall arrest and has been compromised. Make sure those are intact as well. Some of the obvious things you want to check for are cuts, pulls, tears, uh, discoloration from UV uh, that can compromise the, uh, the harness in any way. Once you've determined that the harness is uh, suitable to be used, you want to take it by the back D-ring, shake it out, and there's a natural tendency for the leg straps to fall down. You want to look for a chest strap. You know this is going to go across your chest and this D-ring is going to go in my back dorsal D-ring. So with that knowledge, you're going to put your right arm through there, left arm through here. Now there's a natural tendency to want to start tensioning what's loose. Before you do that, you want to make sure that your sub-pelvic strap is positioned below the buttocks. This is going to catch you in the event of a fall arrest and provide the support that you're required or needed for a rescue. So right now this is a little bit high, so we're going to adjust it. And we're going to do that by adjusting the torso straps. We're going to let out some of the webbing. To make this longer, turn you around once again. Now the sub-pelvic is exactly where you need it. It's uh, below the buttocks. With that, you're going to work the harness tensioning from the bottom up. So the next thing is to take your leg strap. You don't want to put any twists, and you don't want to crisscross your leg strap. So why don't you reach underneath, do those one at a time. Make sure, again, no twists, and do not crisscross. You want to tension this to where you get about two to three fingers in. If you can put your fist in and start rolling your fist, it's too loose. Put two to three fingers in there. That's tension properly. Same thing on the other side. Why don't you go ahead and do this yourself? Good. Chest strap. You want to wear the chest strap just on or above the nipple. The only purpose of the chest strap is if you fall nose to toe, it's to keep you from blowing out the harness. So actually the chest strap, you do not want to wear tight. If you wear it too tight, you're going to take a pop right here. You actually want this a little bit on the loose side. Make sure you tuck away any loose webbing. I'm going to lower this to where the nipple is. So we took. Make sure you have enough mobility. Reach it again. I'm not too tight. Not tight. Okay. You reach the D ring, turn around. Okay. Turn around. Make sure your legs are can you bend down, squat down. Get back up, not too tight. Okay. It's good to go. What we're going to cover here is the basics on the inspection, use, and maintenance of uh, self-retracting lifeline. Traditionally, these are mounted overhead, so uh, in the inspection phase, uh, the worker is going to have the snap hook uh, brought down from the ele elevated uh, position, and the first thing you want to inspect for is whether or not it's seen a fall. The way you're going to know that on this particular model is there's going to be uh, separation that occurs inside here, and a red band will be exposed, and a red means stop. Uh, that's your indicator as to whether or not this has already seen the forces of a fall. 
So in that we don't have the red band here. We also want to uh, make sure that the locking or double locking snap hooks are working properly. Uh, checking the gate here to make sure it doesn't disengage without two opposing forces. So we're good there. So this is a locking type snap. We also want to make sure that the gate, there isn't lateral play, which this one is, is fully intact. So we're good to go here. Once this has been uh, deemed usable, you want to take this and hook it to your dorsal D-ring. A uh, couple inspection uh, criteria as well is to make sure that the unit is locking up. And what you want to do in a mounted vertical position, you want to give it a strike and make sure it does engage, which it does. Then release it and it should go back into the retraction tension mode, which it did. The other thing you want to do is pull out, uh, every six months you want to pull out 50% of the cable, inspect it, let it go back into the housing, then pull out 100%, same thing, with gloves on, uh, and make sure it goes back into the housing properly. Uh, if, you leave these, if you leave these down and out in the exposed uh, fashion that we have it here, uh, exposed to the element, two things are going to happen. Uh, this could have an adverse effect being exposed to the element on the cable. Also, your spring could lose its memory, and what happens there is as you climb, uh, this does not retract back into the housing, and that uh, uh, creates a very uh, dangerous situation. These are designed to be used in the retraction tension mode at all times. So anytime you're moving and this is not retracting properly back into the housing, you must take it out of service.